How's it going everyone? It's Avi from Weather Sponge 5000 and in this video we're going to forecast how much more or less snowfall compared to average you should see in each area of the United States and the first map we're going to take a look at which gives a really good indication of how much more snow or less snowfall you will see is the El Nino snowfall anomaly map which pretty much compares El Nino's um, average snowfall to um, average um, to the long term average um, and and we clearly see during El Nino years, it's a lot more snowy than usual. We see a lot more snowfall accumulation um, just to the east of the Rocky Mountain Ranges, where um, typically during El Nino years, you see um, snowfall anomalies that are hovering around 6 to 10 inches above average. So right around Kansas, Colorado, New Mexico, and Texas, it's safe to assume that you should expect a lot more snowfall this El Nino season and then a little bit for um focusing a little bit further eastward towards the southeast we see that you do experience typically more snowfall than usual um during El Nino years however the departure from average isn't as strong further eastward the southeast experiences maybe anywhere between one to two inches more snowfall than usual during El Nino years and from northeast however the departure from average does become a little bit higher in some areas such as the Washington DC area where you typically experience anywhere between four to eight more inches of snowfall than usual right around Washington DC this extends northward into Baltimore and we do see it's around average in New England we have some areas that are slightly below average while some areas are or slightly above average however with the factors i'm gonna show you guys a little bit later during the video um it makes um i'm assuming that we're gonna see more snowfall than usual right around the eastern half of the united states because not only um we're gonna see an el nino um which does bring more snowfall along the interstate 95 corridor but we're also gonna see a positive pna pattern but moving our focus a little bit further westward into the northern midwest we do um you guys do see a lot less snowfall than usual anywhere between six to ten inches less of snowfall and in a lot of areas in the higher elevations of the rocky mountain ranges the departure from average is even stronger where you see less than 10 inches of snowfall compared to average during el nino years usually of course um this isn't um this map isn't um end all be all um of, there are still other factors we need to take into consideration before we make um our snowfall anomaly forecast but this really gives a better idea of which areas are more likely to experience more snowfall and the areas are more likely to experience less snowfall and for the areas of less snowfall it's most likely going to be right around the pacific northwest this year as well as the northern midwest so here's a latest look at the PNA pattern or the Pacific North American oscillation and we are seeing that the index has forecast has been changing over the past several days now it's seeing a little bit more to the neutral phase rather than a straight positive phase like it was stating a little bit earlier um during the week so um that could um certainly play a role in limiting the snowfall at least early on in the winter time frame for the eastern half of the united states but we do see it bounces right back into a positive phase and likely for the rest of the winter as it seems like it's most likely going to be the scenario that um for the heart of the winter at least we're going to be in a positive pna pattern since this index has been very very persistent on that idea so if we were in a P, uh, positive PNA pattern for the heart of the winter, that would bring a lot more snowfall um, right around the eastern half of the United States since the pressures would be lower. We'd see a lot more nor'easters move up the east coast, so the chance of snowstorms are a lot higher. And the chance you're going to see a lot more snowfall this winter are a lot higher thanks to that. While during a positive phase, um, we also see that there's, there's a strong amount of ridging right around the west coast of the United States which would bring a lot more drier than normal conditions and less snowfall and combining that with an El Nino that certainly would make the snowfall anomalies take a hit um, when it comes to how much below average it is um, especially in the higher elevation so you shouldn't expect a lot of snow this winter relatively speaking um, in the Pacific Northwest region 
Another factor, like I said in my previous few videos, that will play a big role is the drought monitor. Because if you're in a drought, of course, you're going to see a lot less snowfall than normal this winter. And right now, a lot of the areas in the, uh, um, in the drought are the areas that are expected to get um, hit the most with storm systems during an El Nino pattern, such as the southeast, where in some areas the drought is severe. However, like I've been saying in my previous videos, expect this drought to go away. It seemed um, I do believe the El Nino pattern will eventually win out and then um, moisten up the surface right around the southeast to not only enhance the amount of moisture but enhance the possibility of snowfall accumulation this year in the southeast since it's simply colder than normal during El Nino years in that region. So expect the drought conditions to go away. It might be a little bit warm and dry um th during the early part of the winter so you're gonna see the snowfall anomaly not be as strong but i but i am confident that there will at least be one or two snowstorms moving through that will make this year um bring more snowfall than what you're typically used to in those areas and then um taking a look at the western um mississippi river valley the drought conditions are pretty severe there as well and this extends into the pacific northwest as well and i only expect the drought conditions to get worse right Right around the northwest thanks to an el nino pattern so expect a lot less snowfall than normal thanks to that and another big factor we need to take a look at is the temperature anomalies and um based on um strong to moderate el ninos and how they fared out when it came to temperature during the winter time frame compared to long-term average we typically see a lot cooler a lot more cooler than average conditions for the southeast extending into the rocky mountain ranges and the southwest united states and this extends into the northeast as well so this makes me believe that the snowfall um anomaly the departure from average in the areas where it's colder than average should be a lot um, higher um, when it comes to receiving more snowfall than usual. So you definitely should expect more snowfall this year right around the southeast um, and this includes the northeast as well and this includes uh, rocky mountain ranges and that will definitely play a big role in my forecast um in my forecast when forecasting the snowfall anomaly in each area so um for this forecast i took i pretty much looked at the snowfall averages over the entirety of the united states and based on um, years where it was above average, I compared um, this year to those above average years and came to a more reasonable conclusion of the exact amount of how much more or less snowfall you should expect this um, winter or the approximate range of um, of the anomaly you should expect. So, um, so let me keep that in mind. And for the northern United States, the temperatures are hovering closer to average. I'll lean a little bit more to the temperatures being slightly above average in a lot of these areas this winter so definitely um pay close attention to that and that will limit the snowfall um, um the amount of snowfall you receive in those areas so here's my complete snowfall anomaly forecast for the entirety of the United States. So right up along the Interstate 95 corridor, like I showed you guys with the El Nino map where we see a lot more snow, or I shouldn't say a lot more, but we typically see more snowfall than usual up along the Interstate 95 corridors. And combining that with the fact that I do believe we're going to see much stronger jet stream dip thanks to a positive PNA pattern. I, um, I think that we're going to see much cooler than average conditions for the snowfall to be a, um, a lot higher than what you, you're typically used to. Um, and since the Northeast isn't in a drought either, and while a lot of other areas in the United States are currently um, in drought, that makes me believe that a lot of the moisture will lean a little bit more towards facing the Northeast um, since there's going to be a strong ridge right over the Northwest Pacific and we're going to see stronger ridging at least for the early part of the winter right around the Southeast. So that'll steer a lot of storm systems straight to the Northeast to avoid the strong ridging and the drought, um, the severe drought conditions these areas are experiencing. So I expect the snowfall anomaly to be a lot higher this winter. Um, over 10, you should expect more than 10 inches of snow um, compared to your regular average in the pink shaded area, which is certainly a lot of snow, a lot more than what you're typically used to. And then in the blue shaded areas, um, expect five to 10 inches of more snowfall. And while that isn't as much as um, 
expecting 10 more inches of snowfall compared to average in a lot of these areas that's still considered um, a higher amount than what you're used to and in fact even higher than um, relatively speaking compared to what um, 10 inches would bring in the northeast because in places like Virginia and North Carolina five inches of snow might be at least um, relatively speaking wise a whole lot more when it comes to percentage than let's say 10 inches of snow in a place like New Hampshire where New Hampshire experienced a lot areas experience over 60 inches of snow if you only experience let's say four inches of snow and see five um, additional inches of snow right around North Carolina then that would mean that you experience over a hundred percent more snowfall than what you're used to um, which um, in a mile 10 inches of snow in New Hampshire wouldn't be even 20% um, more snowfall in that area so relatively speaking 5 to 10 inches of snow could still be a lot more than what you're used to so definitely pre um, be prepared for that and then for the southeast I'm expecting a large area where you should expect 1 to 5 inches of snow again relatively speaking this is a lot more than what you're typically used to um, especially if you're in the higher end of this range as I do expect the El Nino to bring a lot more storm systems a lot more snowfall right over the southeast so in areas like Atlanta and Birmingham you could experience over five inches of snow this winter and potentially close to 10 inches of snow I wouldn't rule out that possibility with a couple of snowstorms moving through and then for the Rocky Mountain ranges um, you should expect 10 more inches of snowfall than average um, which during El Nino years it's pretty typical for this to occur thanks to the amount of snow um, thanks to the amount of storm systems that move through and of course the higher elevations get impacted the most so places like Albuquerque and color and Denver you should expect um, a lot more snowfall this winter um, and the one to five inch range extends a little bit further westward into Utah as well Nevada and then the higher elevations of California expect 10 more inches of snow than what you're used to and then taking, um, shifting our focus to the northern Midwest and the Pacific Northwest um, so in areas like um, Milwaukee um, even Chicago expect one to five inches of snowfall less this winter as I do expect a strong ridging associated with the El Nino will limit the amount of storm systems and clipper systems that move through that would um, bring the snowfall um, closer to average so it's like less snowfall a slightly less snowfall in those areas five to ten inches of snowfall less um, over the Dakotas extending into Minneapolis as well and Billings um, Montana you should expect five to ten inches of um of less snowfall for the same reason and then you should expect le um, more than um, less than or I shouldn't say more than but less than 10 inches of snow um, compared to average in the higher elevations of the Cascades and the Rocky Mountains so this is my snowfall anomaly forecast for the entirety of the United States if you want even more in detail forecasts regarding how much more or less snowfall you should expect this winter just make sure to comment down below your specific location or area and I'll do my best to give you guys a more in detail look on the snowfall anomaly forecast in your area so make sure to comment down below if you're interested but that's it for now guys and i thank you guys for watching